Igniting, inspiring. In college, I, I worked for AM Records, and uh, that was an open door to meeting artists and taking them to radio stations and stuff like that. So I did that. And I booked the afternoon to write with Joey and we went to this place called The Workshop. And we, I brought a groove, I walked in with a groove and a couple of ideas. If you keep moving in close, fingers stirring ice in my glass, keep whispering nothing's like this something we always had, you'll make a boy relapse, fall fast, right back to where I thought I had a chance. You're listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. A very special episode. He is a songwriter. He is the co-coordinator of Nashville Songwriters Association International, New York City, and he's currently writing songs and trying to get them placed with other artists. He is Scott Foreman. Scott, how are you? This evening. I'm great, Fox. Thanks for coming. Like I always say and tell you, I am better than I deserve. Would you Would you say that about yourself? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm, th- I'm great. I'm very thankful for uh, how things are going. Scott, I met you uh, long about a year ago. Um, you're in New Jersey at a place called Boxwood Coffee. Uh, it's a place, a great place for open mics, mainly uh, musical acts. Um, I do a lot of spoken word. Um, but you are a very, you're a very approachable, uh, approachable guy, and I dabble in songwriting. And we co-wrote a song um, about a year ago. But um, you are a music junkie, as I know you, a music guru. I mean, you you grew up uh, in the Detroit area. Heavily Motown influence. Before we talk about that, talk about your your earliest influences in music and and just your road up to where you are today. Yeah, I liked uh, Motown. I I like James Brown. Believe it or not, love James Brown. Uh, Motown, any of the Motown music, all of the singer songwriters, uh, the the greats in the seventies. They were you know Carole King, James Taylor. Neil Young, uh, and a lot of those songs were easy to play when you started playing chords. They were you can get the songbook and they were easy. But those those are songs that uh, those are our artists. And I, I also was influenced by Led Zeppelin and a lot of the heavier rock bands, uh, Iggy Pop, Ted Nugent, some of those those kind of people, the Detroit people. I love the Romantics also. Uh, they were great songwriters. Now you, you got your first guitar at twelve years old. Yeah. Right. Do you remember the first song you played on that guitar? I can't tell you the name of it. Um, obviously, got a chord book, got a, got an acoustic guitar at twelve. Uh, started banging out some chords, reading reading the, the acoustic guitar forms. Uh, and I remember a kid came over to my house. Uh, I think I forget his first name, but his last name was Edmonds, and uh, it wasn't Dave Edmonds. It was not Dave Edmonds. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, he came over to my house and we played together and I remember it was, it was like what you call a play date today and, and, uh, you know, for tweens and, uh, we played and, uh, and did, uh, came up with a couple songs and, you know, we're hopefully going to play them in a, in a, uh, op- a, a, a talent contest, something like that. But we didn't, uh, you know, it was just probably, we got together once or twice and that was it. We didn't know where to go with it. Do you still have the guitar? No, no. I moved a few times. It moved. We it moved, moved the internet. That was in England, actually, and I went to school in England for. Uh, my dad moved over overseas, and uh, so when I lived over there, that was. It started there. Then I got an electric guitar after that. What was he in? What business was he in that you had he, to move because you worked you're... for Chrysler? He was a, a, a ah. engineer at Chrysler, and uh, they they owned some different companies. They had actually bought some companies in England and. France and Spain, and so he went over uh, to do engineering for Europe. Wow, and you've, you've, you have been all over the map, and um, you, you've done a lot in the music business. And like I, we said in your introduction, you were the co-coordinator of NSAI New York City. What were, what were some of the events, first of all, that got you started in the music business, and 
what, in terms of these things, led to your involvement with NSAI? Okay. So music business, uh, first of all, seeing some incredible, great groups, what, and in England too, uh, saw some great stuff. Uh, and other influences are Van Morrison, and he was one of my favorite live bands uh, to see. Uh, Led Zeppelin, uh, Rory Gallagher uh, was a great Irish guitar player. But um, the uh, in college, I, I worked for A and M Records, and uh, that was an open door to meeting artists and taking them to radio stations and stuff like that. So I did that. Uh, it was a couple years, and it was a little little pay job. They gave you a little bit of a tiny salary and expenses and stuff. And you got to go to radio stations and meet some artists, and that was kind of cool. That was fun. Uh, after college, I started a record label. Uh, that's it was uh, it was difficult. It's hard to get paid, you know. When you did physical product, you had to make it, manufacture it, and, and sure. collect on it. The difference now is it's still hard to get paid from Spotify and those kind of companies because. The little guys don't get paid very well, and you have to have a lot of plays. Um, but anyway, back then I did that, um, and then uh, you know I kind of gave it up for a while. I wrote I wrote songs and stuff, uh, but then I helped other bands and, and things, and then um, kind of let it go for a while. And then in, in the early two thousands, mid two thousand, I was listening to a lot of dance music from Europe, uh, some creative type DJs and things like that that I thought were, were different. And uh, I, I wanted to uh, learn the software because the software was really growing up and Pro Tools and uh, Logic were it was changing, up. yeah. And uh, I ended up buying Pro Tools, but I ended up using Reason, which is a program that uh, has a lot of stuff in it that was easy to use. And, and I really liked the community that was going on with this company with Reason at the time. And uh, so I've... I started doing songs with that, with that, um, kind of in the dance music vein. And then I went to this ASCAP uh, expo in in LA, and I saw uh, some big hit songwriters, including some country songwriters and things like that. I went two years in a row, and I remember one of the guys. I'm one of the, I, I watched the videos afterwards, and I remember one of the guys said um, uh, that he um, he said his name was Daryl Brown, and he wrote. Um, I'll Think of You by Keith, Keith Urban. Okay. And he said, um, and he told the story of how he got it to Keith Urban and he almost didn't get it on the record. And and he was <clears> talking and he was saying, they were saying, well, what other avenues are there? And he said, NSAI, National Songwriters Association. Boom. I looked him up and they were having a convention and uh, they had um, uh, J.D. Souther speaking. Sure, sure. Uh, who wrote songs Eagles. for the Eagles. He sure. wrote with Jackson Brown and those kind of people. And... Um, uh, they had him speaking, and they also had Cara De Guardia, who had just been on American Idol, and she was a, she was a judge on American Idol, but she was also a big songwriter in her own right. Has her own book. Uh, she had a book out, and uh, she worked at Billboard magazine. She talked about how on her lunch hour she wrote with Paul Abdul once, and, and so on. So how about that for how about that for a lunch date? Yes, <laughs> Paul Abdul and write a song in an hour. In an hour. Yeah. So Come that was on. crazy. Um, she was. She had a big background in. But but, but anyway, you asking about the, 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 the how it led up to NSAI. So so I I went to the ASCAP Expo two years in a row, and then I looked up at NSAI. I went to their uh, seminar that they have during the Tin Pan South Week, which is a week of all of the top songwriters in Nashville, including hit writers, but also some people that have had their own artist careers and so on. And they play in ten different clubs, and they play two shows a night. Lots of different people play. Uh, every night is totally different, and uh, uh, it goes for four or five nights, and it is an incredible festival. Uh, I went one year, and I went to the seminar, and then I, I went to, I think I went to two nights of two shows, two or three shows, and the next year, and since then, I will go on every year. Yeah, you called me on, basically on your way there this, this, past, um, this past year. You're hooked, yeah, yeah. for sure. And now I go, and I go to the Tim Pan shows, but I also write during the day when I'm in Nashville uh, because NSAI provides um, writing rooms for free. They have four or five writing rooms in, in uh, at their headquarters. They do, yep. And uh, so I set up dates when I go down there and, and write with people because I might as well make the most of it. Mm. Um, but as far as becoming a coordinator, so I went to NSAI meetings. I went to the New York meetings. There was one in um, out in... Uh, uh, 
in uh, Morris County there was one. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the town. I should know, but, but I don't. It begins with a C. I can't remember. It's not Clinton. Uh, anyway, it was out there. Anyway, th- they had meetings out there as well, and I started going there, and then I went to the ones in New York, uh, and I really liked the New York one because it was bigger, and there were you know 12 to 20 people every month. Um, who played their songs. The first one I went to, I didn't play a song, I just listened. And then I, I kept going, and I went, I continued to go even when I didn't have a song. Um, and then that that developed, and one day I'd come back from into, uh, Tin Pan South in, in Nashville, and I was standing in one of the buildings in New York that I work, and uh, there's a songwriter standing there with his guitar who I knew. His name's J.T. Harding, and he's from Detroit. Okay. And he wrote Smile by Uncle Cracker, and he wrote uh, a bunch of other songs for um, Dirk Bentley, uh, Keith Urban, uh, and so on. And, and you would know and Jake Owen. Um, and J.T. was standing there, and I, I just walked up to him started talking to him. It turns out he was working on a play with, a, with somebody. Okay. And J.T. came and... Uh, Got his number and uh, he he played he came and did, spoke to our, our chapter. I was not a chapter coordinator at the time. Nick Saro, who I work with, and, and Sandy Murphy, uh, Nick was running it at the time, and he asked me uh, about six months later. He said, "Would you like to co-coordinate with me?" So it's I'm one of three people, and um, been doing it almost five years now. Yeah, you. I mean, you're just relentless. I listened to, to mention another podcast, the uh, Six Minute Music Business Podcast with a guy named Wade Sutton. And he does these little six minute blurbs, and what he said last week um, on on one, it was a kind of a motivational kind of thing because you know as we've discussed the music business is a tough business, and he was trying to to lift people up uh, who who were down, and he said this. He said there is a lot to be said for people who just do not go away. And you just, like you said, you, you, you kept going to those meetings even when you didn't have a song. And uh, lo and behold, you, you are um, heavily involved uh, at NSAI New York City. Now, you co-write a lot. You've mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Give us, uh, give the listeners three, three things that, that make a good co-write. Um. To balance, if, if you're writing with one or two, if you write with two people, you should complement each other. Uh, if you're writing with three people, there should be some, uh, hopefully you try to get three people together in a room that complement each other. So, for instance, I'm not a great singer. You're going to hear a couple songs from me. I don't consider myself, I'm honest with myself, I don't consider myself a great singer. Okay. But um, when you write together, it's nice to come out of there with a work tape, an iPhone um, uh, memo that you have a, a song done. And if you've got a good singer in the room, hopefully that person sings it, you play it, and, and you're finished. You know, And most of these co-writes are three hours, sometimes four hours. Um, so getting in a room with somebody, a good co-write is finishing, first of all. Uh, right. And, and it doesn't always have to, you don't have to finish, but a, gr- a good co-write is when you come out of a room and you've got the basics of the song together. So you have... It would be great to have a verse and a chorus, maybe a second verse and, a, and the chorus, maybe even a bridge, um, which is kind of the current format of, of songs that are on the radio. Uh, not always a bridge, but uh, it would night. It'd be it's a great co-write is when you come out of there and you're done, and and you might tweak it later, but uh, you come out with something that's exciting, and you walk out there and you drive away, or you ride the train away, and you listen to this thing on the way home. And it's like, wow, that was fun. I didn't expect that. There was unexpected right. stuff that yeah. happened. Somebody said something. I came in with a lyric. They twisted it around. There was a melody there that I didn't have. Because I cannot personally, when I write by myself, I just come up with snippets of ideas. I'll, st- I'll just start with a groove. Um, I will try to do some iterations of maybe a couple of different uh, vocals, maybe a couple of different melodies. And then... You know, hopefully, um, the other person that I write with, it's it's amazing what happens. And say, lately, I've been doing these three way ones where you get three people in a room, and when you get three good people in a room that have done it before, and, and you get to a certain level where you've written with other people, you want to write with people at, at that same level because there's much more uh, excitement that goes on. But there's always the the um, 
the, the the challenge of writing you write with somebody new somebody you don't know like a blind date right and you never know what's going to happen sometimes it's a struggle and sometimes it comes out great right and you've you've you've, you've done it all you've done it all in, in the co-writing world you've lived all over the place you've born in detroit where'd you go to college uh michigan state michigan state so you're a spartan yeah. all right so you're an, you're an east lansing uh yes. a man you've you've lived in spain um, you've lived in uh, the UK. Um, you've done it all. And, and through all of this, as we know, I like to say, the, the hands on a clock go up and down and around for everybody. So what I want you to share now um, with the listeners is maybe a personal or professional highlight, uh, highlight or hero and then a hardship. So first, let's choose between a, a hero and a highlight. One or the other, or both? Let's do, let's do one or the other. Okay. Um, I think the highlight was, um, in this songwriting journey, was writing with a guy, uh, Joey Ebach, Ebach. Um, and Joey reached out to me through a, a songwriting organization. I, I belong to a few. And he reached out to me, and I had some tracks on SoundCloud, and... Uh, there was a guy that had a hit record at the time uh, by um, Brett Young called Sleep Without You. And the na- the initials on the uh, the record were Jay Ebach. And I was like, wow, you're reaching out to me. And it turns out it's his brother that wrote okay. that song. And his brother has four or five uh, number ones. And uh, Joey has got his own career going, and he's working really hard, and he does demos and everything like that. But he reached out to me, so that was exciting. Um, we did one. We did one song with another co-writer, Chelsea, who I'll be I'll be playing Chelsea Ballin, and she's doing really well. Um, so Joey, Chelsea, and I did a song together. But Joey and I decided we were going to write together uh, in Nashville. So I flew to Nashville for for a, a seminar. And I booked the afternoon to write with Joey. We went to this place called the Workshop, and we I brought our groove. I walked in with a groove and a couple of ideas, and um, we came out there. We came out of the uh, writing session with a song called "Keep Talking Like That," and I liked it. We tweaked it a little bit. Uh, he made a great demo of it, and then I uh, submitted it on this. Um, there was something called the Olay Challenge, which is Olay Music, which now is Anthem Entertainment, and. Uh, they were looking for songs uh, to put in their catalog through, and and they were picking people at all the different chapters of NSAI, and there's a hundred of them, a uh, hundred plus around the country and the world. Right. So people submitted them. I was not allowed to submit in my chapter because I'm a coordinator, so I, I couldn't compete in the chapter. There was a chapter submission, uh, and the winner was Selda Sahin, and she got a great song in there. Um, and then I was allowed as a coordinator to submit. All the coordinators got to submit songs. So that happened in the spring. And somewhere in July of 2018, I got an email that I wasn't expecting because I had submitted it in, in April. And uh, in July, I get an email saying, we picked your song. At wow. It. And, and I didn't know if anybody else was being picked or whatever. I just, I just like, wow, uh, this is crazy. And so I had to go through the contract and everything like that. It was, that was an exciting thing. And then Joey was, you know, I called him up and texted him, and he was he was crazy excited. And, uh, you know, that was a big highlight to be able to get signed like that. Because I know a lot of people that have moved to Nashville that haven't uh, had success yet. Um, they're great writers and so on, but they, there's only so many slots uh, to get to get signed and, and full time writers and we were signed for one song. I'll just be clear clear on that. Right, right, right. Um, full time writers some publishing companies have eight writers, some have you know, ten, fifteen, twenty writers. The bigger ones have more, but uh, the smaller ones have eight writers and those writers a lot of them are extremely accomplished. So it was nice to be able to be included with that and hopefully something uh, Will come up. Come and up. you're throwing, throwing, throwing your, your your name in the hat and just putting in the work. And you've been doing it since you've been 12 years old. So well, um, only only the last really the last five or eight years have I been concentrating on the on the the, the, the focused writing. The, 
you know, 12 years Really old, grinding it 12 out. 12 years old was when I realized I wanted to just do personal, you know, write right. songs and not play covers. Yeah, right. And it's developed into um, that today. So the, the highlight with, uh, with Joe Ebach and now uh, the other side to that, the, the ups and downs in life. It either could be a personal or professional, a hardship story. Hardship uh, was losing my dad in college when I was in college. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, my dad had a, a brain tumor, and um, he was a really encouraging guy. So he took a, he took the family over to Europe, and we traveled and skied together, did all that stuff. And as a father, uh, he always encouraged me to do whatever I wanted to do. And my mom was more conservative. She's like, your dad worked in a company and he worked there for his life and you shouldn't be doing this and that and the other and these. But I'm sure he had to take a lot of chances to get to where, to get to that point, right? Well, he probably did, yeah. Yeah. yeah he was, and he was a very studious engineer and everything like that. But, but anyway, the, 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 I think the disappointment was, you know, we had a, we had a really good, uh, life, teenage life traveling and, and, and really, really getting a lot of experience. And then when Dad got sick, which it took a couple of years, um, that was right about when I was getting out of college, and it was like, oh, Dad's not going to be around anymore, you know? And, mm. and it was tough. that was a tough one. And uh, kind of wondered if, you know, he scared me, wondered if I was going to have that same thing. Uh, you know, that's what it goes through a young person's head, is like, if your father dies of a brain tumor, are you going to die of a brain tumor? And right. so on and so forth. So those were, those were tough things. Um, but uh, just continued on, you know, and uh, continue to do what I wanted to do musically and have fun. Are there ways uh, your dad is reflected in your songwriting? Uh, probably not. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I tried to ask yeah. a deep question and it didn't, yeah. didn't, didn't, didn't quite work. But, but, <laughs> but I'm, I, I'm sure, you know, personally, I mean, I hope you, I know you do, keep them in your heart. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, been been some years now. Thank you for that. I mean, okay. going both ends, we went professional and then we went personal for the, for the hardship. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we we've talked a lot. I, I think it's time to to show out. Scott's going to play a couple of songs for us now, and um, I will leave it to you to explain the first one. Okay, this is going to be uh, this is a song I wrote with Chelsea Ballin. And Chelsea was somebody that was, uh, she came to a couple of the NSAI meetings in New York. She was in college. And she also came to one of our showcases. And um, she would send me songs. I, I knew she, she was special. She had a good voice. She, she sang different. She was different than everybody else. And I, and I said, uh, and she said, well, can I send you some stuff? And she did. And I said, can I send you some stuff? Meaning some just starter ideas and right. empty tracks and things like that. So I sent her, uh, we got together in, in Nashville uh, on one of my trips. Uh, we did a couple songs together and it went really well. We wrote one with Joey and, uh, and so on. And this one was one where I, I came down and I said to her, I've got this kind of a, a chorus idea, you know, how can I forget you? And I gave her the idea for the song in about an hour and a half. We had a verse and a chorus, and then she wrote, the, I think she wrote the, the second verse and the, the bridge, which I trust her. Uh, so, like, if I send her something and she wants to write it, you know, we might get together on, a, on a Skype and tweak it. But this is called, uh, it's actually called Forget You.
time And the car was blasting our song Like a flashback that I didn't ask for I don't want to remember anymore Like the bad times that the good times turned into How can I forget you? Came across your picture in a drawer At my mom's house on the second floor Don't know what I was looking for in the first place Maybe I was searching for a sign Another damn reason why I should call you up tonight Can't do nothing to get you out of my head Lord knows I've been trying to forget, yeah, yeah. How can I forget you? When your last name is the street that I grew up on. Every time I get to the stop sign, other cars blasting a song like a flashback that I didn't ask for. I don't want to remember it more like the bad times that the good times turn into. Flashbacks you didn't ask for at Scott Foreman and Forget You on episode 49 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Scott, that was pristine. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, um, I've, I've heard you play a lot live, and um, you done well with that one. you done well with that one. Do you, uh, do you want to play another one for us? Or is yeah, it, I'd like it, to play another one. I want to get a, a drink of water. He's going to go get a drink of water, and I will... Um, Do you want anything? No, I'm, I'm actually all good. Your favorite beverage. My favorite beverage, yes. Water, water, and more water. So, a little more background on, on, on Scott and I. This is going back uh, about a year, and I approached him at Boxwood Coffee in Summit, New Jersey, and I said, hey, um, I'm a... Very, very, very novice songwriter, and I know I'd be writing up if I, I did this for sure. Would you like to collaborate on a song? And I, I shot you a couple of titles, and First Kiss at the Bar uh, struck you. So um, um, that's one that we worked on about uh, about a year ago, basically to date. And I want to personally that, that's thank song, you. And, and I've played that song live there. Um, you know, that song... Uh, is, is a good song and I, and I was listening the other day to the, that be, starter track that I did for it and I said you know I gotta I gotta sit down and do it mm-hmm. it's 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 always a challenge to to record vocals because I'm not a perfect singer so it's it's those are always the the tough things but um, this song um, was a song that uh, got signed and uh, this is the one uh, that Joey Ebach and I wrote keep talking like that and uh, hopefully I can sing it all the way through. You know, you can listen. You, you, you we'll, can we'll you can it. you can cut it off wherever you'd like. Okay, and <laughs> and no I'm one hoping. and no one will know except you and Joey Ebach. I'm hoping for Joey's sake that I can get through the whole thing, and I'm sure I will because he's a wonderful guitar player, great producer, 
great songwriter and uh, a wonderful guy too and uh, I hope to write more songs with him shortly and he, he is committed to doing it so uh, it's just hard, it's really hard talk about writing up it's hard to get on his schedule because <laughs> it's usually three months out and uh, you know you cross your fingers and, and hope and it, so far he's been uh, super super good anyway so this one um, no no further intro I'll just start it out Probably only because your friends are around. Know exactly what you do to me, girl, and you're doing it on purpose now. Now I don't know if it's the liquor talking, don't get me wrong. I'm loving every second of this. But if it's going nowhere, let me off right here. If you keep moving in close, fingers stirring ice in my glass. Keep whispering. Like there's something we always had You'll make a boy relapse Fall fast Right back To where I thought I had a chance If you keep talking like that Like that So just keep talking like that Just keep talking like that Just keep locking those eyes on my But if it's going nowhere, let me off right here. If you keep moving in close, fingers stirring ice in my glass. Keep whispering, nothing's like there's something we always get. You'll make a boy relapse, fall fast, right back to where I thought I Scott, do you hear that? It sounds like a smash, man. That is that is good stuff. Talking like that, Scott Foreman, episode forty nine of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Scott, we, we know that your dad is a, a hero of yours from, from from listening. But if you had the opportunity to take a three hour, or I should say, a one hour car ride with one of the following three people, who would it be and why? Would it be Jimi Hendrix? Would it be Jimmy Page? Or would it be James Taylor? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think I think um, probably James Taylor, just because of the songs and, and stuff. Hendrix would be great. They are, they'd all be wonderful. Be all, all, all wonderful to you know. But but uh, I think Taylor, uh, you know, just from his experience and what he wrote and what he's written over the years and his, and his singability. Everything, I mean, but his and his lyrics are great. What would the, be the first question you would ask him on the car ride? Oh boy! Oh boy. 
<laughs> How would it all start, Scott? Um, I, I would uh, just, I would, I would ask him what he's doing now, what he, what he's been doing now lately, writing and so on like that. Um, probably just, you know, I'd dig into the old songs and and uh, the old albums and ask him about certain things, you know. And, uh, but uh, I, I'd, I'd be interested in, in hearing what he's doing now. I, w- I would be too. He's he's got a, a place in my heart, you know, going to Carolina in my mind. I'm a University of South Carolina graduate, so that uh, that strikes a chord within me. And I like your choice. I like it so much. Now, uh, final couple of questions: Who would you like to hear on an upcoming podcast on this podcast? Um, you should ask me that one. I know that stumps everybody every time. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he obviously, uh, you, could, you could get Bruce Springsteen. I could. <laughs> He's around here somewhere, be, between here and that'd California. Be, that would be a good one. Um, maybe Norbert Leo Butts. Uh, he's an actor, singer, uh, living around here. He's in Maplewood, I think. I think he lives in Maplewood. And he's won some Tony Awards. He'd be, he'd be a good person. He'd be, good. be the first, I mean, principal actor that we've had on yeah. the um, on the podcast. Last episode, we had Nick Davis. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he is now. I don't know where he grew up. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Leo Butts. Norbert Leo Butts. Norbert Leo Butts. Huh. B-U-T-Z. B-U-T-Z. On an upcoming podcast? He's an incredible singer, and he's got a really soulful voice, too. And you're a Detroit man, so yeah. that Motown influence there a little bit, or making you think about it. Uh, share some of your contact information, your SoundCloud. Where can people reach you? Okay, SoundCloud McSwervy. I came up with that name when I was doing the dance music stuff. Spell it for us. M C S W E R V Y. Uh, I have some tracks up there that are instrumentals. I think there's one link to one song I did with Chelsea and Joey. Uh, I will be posting some new stuff up there very shortly, like this week. Um, and then uh, also McSwervy Music uh, at uh, Instagram is, is another one. And then McSwervy. I think I have McSwervy or McSwervy Music on Twitter as well. Okay. Oh, three, three of those. Not on TikTok yet, or. Uh, <laughs> but you're getting there. Or the, or the other ones, yeah. Not on WhatsApp. You have you have you have, you have plans too, but just not right now. Yeah. What about some upcoming uh, events? Um, Open mics. Haven't. Uh, I, there will be probably something at the bitter end. NSAI does a, a, a show with the uh, Songwriter Collective, New York Songwriter Collective, at the Bitter End. We're not doing the December one just because the dates, but we all probably will resume it in January. It'll be, uh, it's Songwriter Night. You play, it's one song each, and it's tw- about 20 songwriters. Um, I will personally, I play the Boxwood Coffee at Summit, New Jersey. I also might be playing the one in Westfield. Those are just because it's local and I get to try out new songs. Oh, new material, um, right. And then I also play the duplex in um, uh, the West Village. Great club, great sound system. I've played with uh, Aubrey Toon, who I got signed with. Um, I've also played with Selda Sahan and some other people. And we're trying to put a show together, uh, I think, for January or uh, February. So Outstanding. Open for that. Outstanding, Scott. This has been, been awesome from your, your personal stories, professional stories, the ups, the downs, everything in between. And thank you for sharing your music with us as well. Thanks for having me. This will wrap up episode 49 of the What's Your Inspiration podcast. Scott and I will talk to you all later. Take good care. You have been listening to the What's Your Inspiration podcast with Fox Buyer. Because impact on each other is the greatest currency you could ever have.